In this episode of the Success Great Podcast, I am joined with Tom Griffith to talk about how to improve profitability and cash flow and how to have a healthy, growing, and profitable business. Tom helps small business owners have a growing and more profitable business so they can achieve their personal and professional goals. Tom, welcome to this episode of the Success Great Podcast. Thanks for having me, Hussein. Pleasure to be here. Awesome to have you here with me on this one. So this is the Success Secret Podcast. I want you first to tell us what do you think success is and what do you see other people have certain misconception of what success is? Yeah, so I think everyone's got their own definition of success. Um, that's for sure. Uh, so for me, it's time freedom and financial freedom. Um, and I think for most people, it does coincide with those two terms in some way, shape or form. Um, but a key part of what I do is understanding exactly what success means to an individual person, a business owner, and then reverse engineering that into how they can get there by using their business uh, to help them. Hmm. So you're working with other people and businesses. Uh why do you think that business owners or entrepreneurs are overwhelmed or stressed out about their businesses? Yeah, good question. So uh, it all starts with not knowing the numbers, not understanding the numbers, not reviewing the numbers, um, and therefore not knowing what to do to improve them and to improve the situation. Um, so that's really where all the problem starts. It's, it's not knowing or reviewing the financials of the business. Mm -hmm. Um and there's not really a surprise because most business owners, they start their business because they're experts at a craft. So a dentist starts a dental practice, a builder starts a construction company, um, a plumber starts a plumbing business, and they start that business because they want to become more focused on their craft and they want to focus on providing the best service they can in their craft. Um, but very often business owners will start their business in their craft. And then a few years down the line, they'll realize that they've been focusing on their craft all this time and they've actually neglected the finances and they haven't looked at actually managing the business and focusing on improving cash flow and profit so that they can have a healthy, growing and successful business. And so they kind of lose sight of the reason that they started the business in the first place, which was, yeah, maybe to focus on their craft, but ultimately it was to get to some end goal, whether that be time freedom, financial freedom or whatever that looks like to them. So I can't hear you saying you're on mute. Sorry. So most businesses fail because they are ignoring their finances. So this is one of the big reasons businesses fail. Actually, because we are in business to make money in general. It's not like a charity, but in one of the things that we should focus on is the financial side of things. Yeah, exactly. So... The Small Business Administration in the US, they quote that around 50% of all businesses uh, fail by, the, by their fifth birthday. So that means all of those businesses, all of those uh, yeah, hopes and dreams of the business owner um, just disappearing with them. Okay, And the reason all those businesses fail, whilst it may, you know, they, they may come up with loads of different reasons, but what it all comes down to at the end of the day is cash. The businesses didn't have enough cash. And the businesses weren't making enough cash because nobody will close a business that is making enough cash. And so, like I mentioned, business owners will generally start a business because they want to focus on one craft or their craft. And they think that by focusing on their craft, because they're really good at it, they'll be able to make lots of money. Um, but then they actually go into business and they realize actually they have to understand business and they have to understand finances and cash flow and how it all works and how it all syncs together. And that's not what they're good at. And that's not why they went into business in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, so what business owners really need to do is either they need to get somebody to help them with the finances, like a financial guide, or they need to understand it themselves and get familiar with how it all works, educate themselves and really focus on using their business as a tool to generate cash so that they can achieve their personal and professional goals instead of being a tool for them to just focus on their craft. Um, and when, when they focus on their craft, what they really end up creating is a very stressful job. Um, uh, one of my clients, Reese, he runs a sports events business. And he said to me, when I first started working with him, he said that I've been running this business for four years and I've been paying myself the bare minimum for that time. I've been working really long hours. Um, and I have very little to show for it. The business isn't worth anything because it's entirely dependent on me. 
And I, I could have and should have just got a job because it would have been far less stressful um, and I would have actually made more money from it and more more to show for my family. And I would have been able to be more present with my family during that time as well. Mm, so cash flow is very important in business. Like we need to make sure that our cash flow is always positive because if the cash flow is negative, we would have a loss at the end of the year. So like uh, working with your clients and yourself, what are the most important things in order to make sure that the business owner is making sure that cash flow is positive? Yeah. <clears throat> so when we talk about cash flow, just we have to be clear that um, cash flow or cash <clears throat> is the total amount that goes into the business uh, or the total amount the business makes or what comes into the business account minus all of the money that goes out. It just measures cash. It doesn't look at profits. Profit and cash flow are two different things. So we can we can post a profit one year, um, but actually cash flow can still be negative. So cash flow is the amount the business owner actually gets to keep. So I just wanted to say that first, just so that anyone listening knows knows what the difference between those two terms are. Um, and then in terms of staying on top of cash flow and improving cash flow for a business, the way I break it down for anyone who I speak to is I break it down into 16 drivers. So there are 16 drivers of revenue, profits, and cash flow. Doesn't matter whether you're Uber or Amazon, <clears throat> excuse me, or a one person band running from a high street in a quiet town. <clears throat> so they're exactly the same 16 drivers. Um, and so you just need to get familiar with what those 16 drivers are for your business, um, calculate them, and then review them regularly, and then work out which ones you can improve that will have the biggest impact on cash flow, which is the amount that you get to keep at the end of the day. Mm. Uh, so are, for are, anyone interested. Are, are there certain drivers in this 16 that are more important than others or all this is the same? So they all have a significant impact on the amount that you actually get to keep at the end of the day. Uh, I would say, I, I mean, I would say they're all as important as each other because if one of them is um, significant, is bad enough, then the bottom line impact is going to be very significant. Um, so yeah, they're all very important. Um, uh, what what any business owner can do today is get familiar with those 16 drivers, um, calculate them for your business, and then work out which ones you could improve, which ones are lower than they should be, and which ones you can improve. And then make that the objective for your next 30 days to focus on improving. Um, and that's pretty much the process that I implement with my clients. Um, and so, yeah, for anyone who is interested in understanding more of what these 16 drivers are, then there's going to be a link somewhere around this, somewhere around this webinar where anyone listening can go and can go and get a copy of that report. Um, you can download it. It's absolutely free. And, uh, yeah, you, like I said, you'll be able to work out what those 16 drivers are for your business and then understand what the impact of each one is. Yeah. So now when we talk about these drivers are, for example, sales and marketing one of these drivers because eventually a business if a business does not sell their services or their product in the best way possible and deliver it to as many people as they can we won't have positive cash flow and profits at the end of the year that's right so sales and marketing they do they do become part of the 16 drivers but we break them more specifically into uh you know something a bit more specific so for example sales that that's a revenue driver and the way we measure sales is the conversion from leads into actual sales okay mm -hmm. so the number of leads you get how many of those become sales that's how we that's how we measure the effectiveness of the sales function and then marketing we we measure marketing that's that's one of the profit drivers we measure marketing as a percentage of revenue and we would aim to keep marketing as a percentage of revenue within a certain range mm -hmm. so what do you think in general if someone if you come to a business and they want to fix it quickly, what do you think are the quick fixes or all these are not really quick fixes that they need time to to take an impact? Yeah, so it really depends on the situation of the business. Um, there are quick fixes, but it really depends on the situation. So I would say for any business owner who wants to have a quick impact and the fastest impact, the, the way to do it is to get familiar with these 16 drivers calculate them for your business. There's going to be a number for each one of them and then work out which ones are lower than they should be. And then work out which ones you can change the easiest or improve the easiest over the next 30 days so that you can improve your cash flow.
and 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 that would be what I would do. That that's going to be the most effective strategy to to improve any business owner situation. Um, and it is actually the exact process that I do with my clients, and I just do it on repeat. So instead of it being just a one off for thirty days, um, every thirty days we basically follow that same process. So we look at the business now, we take a snapshot, we look at what's happened, and we work out where we are. We understand what's working and what's not working in the business, and we break it down into really clear colors, like red, amber, green, so that anyone can understand it. And then we work out which one of those colors we want to turn green, which one is not green that could be green and that we can turn green. And then we focus on that for the next 30 days and that's it. And then in 30 days time, we just repeat the process. And by focusing on the most important things every 30 days and the drivers that are going to improve your cash flow by the most every single 30 days, you naturally remove yourself from the business. So you, you're not stuck in a job anymore and you're focused on working on the business. And that's how you transform from being stuck in a job that you created for yourself into a high performing business owner mm. that's running a, a healthy growing business. Yeah. So when we talk about cash flow, we're talking about positive cash flow, money coming in, like you said, and money going out. Which do you think is more important to focus on money coming in and having more clients or focusing on the money coming out and how we can improve or let's say decrease the expenses of the business? They're both really important because if if you focus on just improving the money coming in and you don't focus on the money going out, then what happens if you spend, if you have more money going out than you have coming in? You know, if you focus on improving the money coming in, but you're still spending too much, then you're still going to have big problems. So really you have to focus on both and you have to look at everything. So what I would recommend in order to get on top of the cash flow, if, if for, for business owners who are feeling a bit lost, is you can just get a very simple Excel or you can even do it on a piece of paper and map out the next 13 weeks and then and then write what is going to come in in terms of cash and what is going to go out. And that is what a cash flow forecast is. It just tells you what's going to happen over the next however long, in this case, 13 weeks, um, so that you know if you've got any upcoming issues when it comes to cash flow. Or if, if you might be cash flow positive and you might be in a healthy position, which is great, um, but it helps you just firstly know that there aren't any looming issues that you need to be aware of. But secondly, once you are aware of the cash flow situation, you can work out what to do to improve it, whether you need to focus on bringing more cash in or whether you need to stop cash going out. Mm. What you mentioned here, the example is looking at a table of, for, for example, 30 weeks to see the picture for the next uh, few months, six months or so. So this is a good uh, idea because we want to know that at certain time, would we have a certain bill to pay or a certain contractor or vendor to pay for? And also have a certain estimate of how much cash is coming into the business based on the estimates that we already have. So this is a good idea or a good tool, I would say, to use in that regard. That's correct. Exactly. Definitely. Definitely. So now working with businesses, uh, what was the worst advice that you have ever received and you applied and you regret uh, applying or have that not passed uh, by you? Um, to be honest with you, I, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, yeah, I honestly can't remember. <laughs> no worries. Uh, so uh, something different than that is, in your opinion, if someone asks you that I have a business for, for example, if we talk, always talk about that, uh, you mentioned the first five years is the, the hardest for the business to get going and grow from there. Uh, should we focus on uh, operations and on how we do things, or we should forget the operation aside and only focus on getting more clients? Yeah, so, you, I mean, you can't have one without the other. So the answer to that question is, again, it really depends. And we'd have to have a look at the exact situation in order, in order to come up with a strategy um i think that rather than saying focus on just getting clients or focus on just getting you know providing the best service or operations or whatever um it needs to be a mix of all of those uh but um if if the end goal is cash cash flow um and that becomes the focus then all of the rest of it will will take care of itself 
do you think pricing is involved in all of this like if you look at the clients work and their profits let's say or income or and do you think that sometimes increasing the prices of the service or the product is a good idea to do because sometimes the margins are not that good for their uh, for the business yeah yeah so sometimes increasing pricing is is the right thing to do and other times it's not so again we would need to look at the exact situation to, to work out what's going on um and the, the the pricing mix if you like would form part of those 16 drivers that i mentioned mm -hmm. um so once you get clear on those 16 drivers we would we would work out what needs to be moved so if your margins are not high enough then we could compare them to say industry averages and work out that actually you're you're not charging enough you're not making enough compared to your your peers and you should you should either be charging more or you should be uh able to deliver this service at a lower cost and we would look at that and review and work out what we can change so in your experience what are the best tools resources or books for people or business owners to look uh, to look into yeah there's a few that i would recommend um one is attraction uh the e-myth is another one uh th those are probably the main two those are probably the main two yeah okay cool so uh tom where can people learn more about you and to get to know you and see what you do with the, the business owners and how you can improve their business and cash flow to make it more profitable yeah so what i would say is for anyone who's interested in what i've talked about today um you can visit you can visit the page that will be somewhere around this webinar uh or, or um podcast um it's it's where you can download the 16 drivers that i've talked about today so it would explain each of the 16 drivers, how to calculate them, and then what to do to actually use those to improve your business. So that's free for anyone who wants it. So you can go on the landing page and download it. The other one, for anyone who doesn't want to do this themselves and you know wants someone to guide them through it, um, there will be a link on that page where you can also schedule a call with me directly, or you can contact me directly. So you're welcome to do that. Awesome, awesome. And Tom, thank you very much for joining me for this episode of the Success Secret Podcast. Uh, really insightful things and very important for people to identify the drivers in their business so they can know where are the leakage is for example or know where they can boost their business in regards to profits thanks Hussein pleasure to be here